It is early morning, Costa Rica. We are racing on our way to possibly find a snake that somebody has spotted in their backyard. So they said, do you guys think you could come catch it and move it to a wild area? And we said, well, the snake is still there. That would definitely make a very cool episode. Okay, we found the snake. It's big. They weren't kidding. Ooh. What do you got? Okay, well, uh, the homeowners, they, they don't want to be filmed, so they're just going to stay inside and probably watch us from the windows. Okay. Uh, but they said, have at it. Said the snake was somewhere over here. Okay. <laughs> so that's all we got going for us. Uh, but they're more than happy to have us here searching. So let's go look. Okay, great. Okay, so what I say we do is split up. Uh, okay. Which direction you want to go? I want to go that way first. Okay, I'll go that way. If you see something, call it out. We'll all converge together. With any luck, we're going to catch and relocate a snake. All right, let's get a snake. Here we go. So my reasoning for going in this direction is because this is a star apple tree. Check that out. Very fragrant fruit. All this fruit needs to be eaten by something. So what happens is rodents and other species will come to eat the fallen fruit and maybe there might be snakes in ambush waiting for them. And I believe it or not, sometimes looking up underneath vehicles is a great place to look because they provide shade and shelter, especially if a car hasn't moved in quite some time. Let me do this. Yeah, there's a big snake. Ugh. I'd easily be able to see if it was hiding up underneath a vehicle like this. Most snakes are nocturnal. So now that it's daytime, the snake is likely going to be hunkered down somewhere. So the next step is to find things to flip. Uh, debris, tin, wood, anything that a snake can hide underneath. And hopefully there is something underneath. Oh man. Look at this. I thought this was snake skin. Snakes are potentially arboreal out here. We have tree boas out here. We have lots of different um, parrot snakes, vine snakes. So it is always a good idea to look up in the rafters to see if there's anything. Look at this. That right there could be a possible entry point, likely for rodents, also accessible for snakes. Whoa, that's actually some water. Yeah, if I was a snake hiding during the day, this would, oh, I just heard something. Oh, there's all kinds of tap holes. Water down in here. Oh, what would have been amazing is if I walked into this abandoned swimming pool and just found a snake curled right up in the water. I was thinking that that might be it. This looks pretty good. We got a uh, I don't know, chicken coop or actually it's a thing full of wood. Lots of spaces for snakes to hide in. Boa, holy smokes. I did not even see it there. Holy smokes. Coyote! Yeah, we got a snake. You got a snake? And Mario just called, he's got a snake. Oh my gosh. Is it big? Holy cow, that is a big snake. Oh my gosh. Dude. It is a boa constrictor. Dude, I, I came around here. I didn't even see that the snake was right there. Oh my gosh. Okay, we found the snake. It's big. They weren't kidding. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna cut this camera. Let's regroup ourselves. Uh, That's a big snake. Dude. Big snake. <laughs> oh my gosh. That is a huge boa constrictor. Okay, so this is it. The moment we're going to engage with the snake and try to safely get it out of this box of logs. Mm. No idea how it's going to behave. 
Oh. Oh, that's a hiss. Oh, oh, oh and there we go. Whoa. Now, the snake's in a position where there's no way I can make a reach for it. You can see it's completely in a defensive strike position. And getting my hand any closer than this could mean getting my fingers entrapped. And look at all these incredibly huge razor sharp teeth. That is intimidating. Okay, start backing up. Good, 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 good. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Perfect. Try to get all those okay. another snake. Whoa! That was close. Okay, cool. Snake is, yep. bring is him out. out. Bring him out. Bring him out. That's good. Don't let it go back in. There you go, there you go. There you go. There you go. That's it. Unbelievable. That snake is all of five, maybe six feet in length. I think Look at the nub tail. Wow. Check this out. Now, if I come on this side of the snake, you can really get an idea for just how big it is. Now, a boa is a non-venomous species, so I don't have to worry about taking a bite and being envenomated. But these snakes have a mouth full of teeth. They're actually like little razor blades turned backwards. And on the top of the skull, they have multiple rows of teeth. So when they grab onto their prey, it locks in place. And the skull's capable of expanding. And these snakes can swallow down prey that are many times larger than their own bodies. And this is what you would consider a full-grown female boa. And that aggressive hissing is basically just saying, I'm a big snake. I'm intimidating. You don't want to get any closer. Got him. OK. There we go. Turn the coils like that. Yep, you have to keep her as straight as possible. OK. Now, it's important to keep the snake stretched out. Otherwise, it's going to completely constrict around me. OK, I got you. I got you. The snake is extremely strong. And I'm being as gentle as I possibly can. OK, I'm going to actually if I shift my hand back just a tiny bit there, oh wow, she's got ticks all over her. Um, I'm gonna use my multi-tool to pull them off. <sighs> she's got a big one right on the side of her head here. Oh, this isn't gonna hurt at all. Oh, look at that, completely full of blood. That parasite is a really unhealthy thing for a snake like this. Right now we're kind of just doing a little bit of a uh, service by hopefully getting rid of some some ticks, but otherwise she would be fine with these uh, as is. As you can see, the coils around my leg, the snake has to feel comfortable. Once you engage the head, the snake has to be in defensive mode. That's when the snake is gonna be at, at its most aggressive. I do have to be aware of where those teeth are at at all points in time. The less pressure I put on her, the less constrained she feels. Yeah, you're getting constricted. That's a... We want to keep those coils spread out as much as we possibly can. Here's another tick. I'm okay. full of ticks right now. I've gotten all the ticks off the top third of the snake. She looks pretty good. You want to stretch her out a little bit so that we can see the, the full length? There we go. That's pretty cool. That is a beautiful snake. Gorgeous. Uh, the good news for this boa is that because we were able to find it and safely catch it, we're now going to be able to relocate it to a much wilder area. All this human habitation, while it may provide good opportunities for this snake to get a meal, it actually puts it in the way of danger. I'm actually really thankful that these property owners said, hey, do you guys want to come safely remove the snake? Because killing an animal like this is actually really detrimental to the environment. These snakes do an incredible amount of good by helping to balance the pest populations. Well, I'd say this was a success. We found the snake, and now we're going to be able to safely relocate it back out into the wild. I'm Coyote Peterson. I'm Harley Koa. Be brave. Stay wild. We'll see you on the next adventure. All right, let's get her into a bag, back off into the wild. Yeah. It's been a rainy morning, but we've got a call. Lockie, where are we headed? We're headed out to the back of the Sunshine Coast hinterland to a house where we've just got a call. They've seen a fairly large snake inside the house. Um, it's generally a pretty good area for brown snakes, this one. So 
very, very likely could be a big brown snake. Okay, if we're finding the eastern brown snake, we're talking about the second most venomous snake in the world. Exactly right. So this is by far the most dangerous snake. The reason for that, they live around people. They are responsible for the vast majority of deaths in this country each year. What is it that you instructed the people at the house to do in this situation? So generally, the best thing that we ask people to do is to contain the snake. Uh -huh. If they close the doors, uh, they put a towel underneath the door so that the snake can't get from one room to the next, we have an idea of where the snake's gonna be. We know it's still there and we can stay there until we find it. This is it. All right, so what's the typical protocol? Um, grab the gear, get in there, find out where they saw it last. Okay. And let's go for it. Here we go. Before it moves. Okay. Got okay. tubes. I'll take this as well. Okay. Back up. All right, let's do it. Knock, knock. Where'd you see it? Down the hall, put a towel in front of the Perfect. All right, pretty tight in here. Yeah. We'll go in, we'll try and find it, and then let's try and restrain it once we get out here in a little more open space. The great thing is that we know which room supposedly it's in. Just check this before we go back past it. Okay. We don't want to go past a room and then have it pop out behind us. Yeah, that's a good call. So this is the perfect thing that we want people to do. Mm -hmm. Now at least we've got a good idea that it's probably in this room. Okay. Yep. All right, go for it. You can already see a few things have been knocked down by the looks of it. Look at how this is sitting up. Oh, yeah, I can see it moving. You see it moving? Oh, you think it's moving? It, it's it moving. Yeah, it's yeah, under yeah, the yeah. car. Oh, there's definitely there's something under there. All right, what do you reckon? Should we go for it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Man, this is I'm sweating. This is really tight quarters. Oh, what's it going to be? What's under the rug? It's a brown snake. Oh, it's a brown snake. It's a brown snake. Here we come. Holy cow. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Let's okay. go for it, shall we? Yeah, yeah. All right, I'm going to pull this back quickly. Okay. And then we'll see what we've got. Oh, oh there yeah. There it is. You can see he's already very much onto us. He's pretty wired. He's going. We're gonna go for it. He's hooked around this. I'm gonna. All right. I'm just gonna back my way out. Yeah, okay. out of the way. Whoa. He's pretty good. You got some tubes? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'd say get it up against the wall there. I'll try and walk him along the wall straight into the tube. I think that'll suit well. goes right into that corner. Oh, wind, All right, Kylie, grab, grab. Yep, well done, well done. You got him? Yep, I got him. Beautiful. Okay. All right. Oh. Great job. Woo! <sighs> Tight spaces and brown Nicely snake. done. Holy mackerel. Okay, let's, uh, let's move to this back porch here. Got a little bit better lighting, and uh, we'll take a better look at this eastern brown. What a catch! Anytime you hold on to a snake that is this venomous, you just have to stop and remind yourself that you're essentially holding on to a loaded gun. Ladies and gentlemen, that is the Eastern Brown, the second most venomous snake species in the world. Now this is a true brown snake and they do get bigger than this. And you can see the beautiful brown coloration on that snake's head right there. It is very in tune with this situation. It recognizes the cameras, recognizes me, recognizes the fact that it's inside of a tube. Now, the reason for the tube is it keeps me safe, keeps the snake safe, and of course keeps the entire camera team safe. It's the best way for us to interact with the snake and take a close look at some of its cool features. You can see flicking its tongue out there. It's just sensing the environment. We're in a residential area. You may be saying to yourselves, coyote, don't animals usually try to avoid human habitation? Not the case with this snake. In fact, the brown snake population has increased since humans have moved into environments like this. And the reason for that is that more humans mean more potential prey species. This snake specializes in eating rodents. Where you have humans, you're going to have food scraps. Food scraps means more vermin. So this snake looks at a house like this that's low to the ground, has stone floors, and it does not see a house. It just sees a maze of potential prey opportunities. Another reason people often encounter this snake is that it's a diurnal species. Look at those big eyes. These snakes have incredible eyesight. And if the snake's moving around during the day hunting, at the same time humans are moving around doing their day-to-day -day activities, 
and you understand why encounters are much more frequent. And these things are fast, one of the fastest snake species here in Australia, and the strike speed is uncanny. You take one bite from the snake and you're dealing with a neurotoxic venom that is almost certain to kill you if you do not receive anti-venom. Just because the snake can be considered deadly, it's more so considered dangerous, right? Because of the anti-venom production that is being done here in Australia, very few people die from snake bites, specifically snake bites from the species. But it's dangerous because of its close proximity to human habitation. The more times you have humans around an area where there's gonna be snakes, the more chances you will have of bites occurring. Whether it's on the feet, on the hands, or any part of your body. If you are unfortunate enough to run into this snake and you receive a bite, trust me, it's gonna be a really bad day. Now, in an instance where you were to come into your bathroom and see a snake and say to yourself, oh, no way, buddy, this is my bathroom, I'm gonna have to eliminate you. You try to kill a snake like this, it's only going to increase your chances of being bitten. So the right thing to do is always call a local authority, somebody like Lockie, who can come in and safely remove the snake and put it back out into the wild. Oh, buddy, it's a good thing that we came across you first because we're going to actually save you and move you to a much more remote location where hopefully there'll be plenty of food sources and uh, you will not find yourself in any sort of danger. But there you have it, the work that Australian Wildlife Encounters is doing on a daily and weekly basis put to the test. Quick, efficient, and the snake and the humans are walking away completely safe. Last step is to get it into a bag so we can transport it to a more wild location. I'm Coyote Peterson, be brave. Stay wild. <laughs> we'll see you on the next adventure. All right, Lock, you want to come in with the bag? Get him in here. Woo! Bring this down low. Yeah. Get him in slowly. Yep. And then let him feed in. Keep this bag high. There we go. Woo! Snake in the bag. All right, let's get this tied up. <laughs> yep. Let's move him around. That is like the ultimate snake that we could have possibly come across. All right, we're going to get this snake into a wild location, and uh, this little danger noodle is ready to go. Snakes belong outside, not inside the house. But if you find yourself in this terrifying situation, make sure to contact Australian Wildlife Encounters so they can safely relocate your resident serpent. Today we're headed out on a snake scavenger hunt. I'll be working alongside my friend and wildlife biologist, Will Robertson. Say hi, Will. Hi, Will. This region is known for its plethora of species. We're gonna be scouring the fields, searching the forests, flipping rocks, and rolling logs, doing whatever it takes to find some of these cool reptiles. Will, are you ready? Let's find some snakes. Ugh, pollen. Oh, snake, I think it was a garter snake. He went down into this little hole right here. Oh, yeah, there's his little face. He's right there. Let's see if I can tickle him out. There he is. Gotcha. Whoa, there we go. All right, let's take a look at this one. So that is the Eastern Garter Snake. One of the coolest things most people don't realize about garter snakes is that they are mildly venomous. Not a venom that could ever hurt a human, but for the most part, these are super calm, super docile snakes. You can see that little defense mechanism right there totally flattening out the body and almost making the head look as if it's V-shaped, which of course would be indicative of a venomous snake, but as we know, the garter snake is completely harmless. This is cool, it's like a river of moss. Look at that. Now normally, you probably have water flowing down through this spillway and towards this lake that we're getting toward but it's just a really unique looking habitat, almost like Lord of the Rings. And it seems as if the lake might pay off because Will just said he's got a big water snake basking. Oh yeah, that's a nice one. These guys are non-venomous, but they do bite quite a bit. So we'll see what this guy does. All right, Will's got the water snake. Oh yeah, beautiful. And definitely a species that people oftentimes think is venomous, but completely harmless. The northern water snake. That's another one for the list, Will. Yeah, there we go. Looking good. Oh, coyote, sanitize real quick. Don't want to spread those snake fungal diseases. Oh, red bellied snake. Oh, red bellied snake. Pretty basic looking snake, except for the fact has a pretty vibrant red belly. Let's flip it. 
Oh, a little vole. Look at this little tunnel. Hi, buddy. Got an interesting little precarious scenario here. There is a rock ledge that a black racer is up on. I think if I drop myself down into this little hole, I might be able to come around the edge and get it. I see it, but it does not see me. It's right there. Definitely right on the edge of this cliff. Got it. <sighs> Getting under control is gonna be a whole nother story. And these snakes are really bitey. Oh, geez. That is one angry black racer. Will, got a black racer for the snake scavenger hunt. Oh. See if I can do this without taking a bite. There we go. Okay. Focus is on the camera at the moment. And there we have it. Another species for the snake scavenger hunt. All right, Mario, I'm gonna bring it up for the tight shot. That is the black racer. Looks like it's getting ready to shed its skin. You can tell that from the cloudiness in the eyes. And the thing that I love most about this species is its agility and its speed. Not to mention the coloration is very similar to the black mamba. But of course, this is a non-venomous species. So a bite is gonna be nothing more than a little soap and water to clean up. All right, watch how fast the snake is when I let it back into the environment. Not. That's kind of cool just to get it in that, that display mode. I thought you were just gonna speed off, but instead you're giving us some incredible B-roll. Nothing wrong with that. Ooh, look at that. Big ringneck snake. That's a nice orange belly. So these guys spend most of their time underground looking for things like salamanders to eat. They're very tame snakes. They never bite. You can see they have tiny, tiny little heads with a prominent yellow ring right around the neck. Double flip. No. Right here? Nope. Guess who found a hog nose snake? Right here, Will. Oh, it's on the move. I got it, I got it, I got it, I got it. I'll grab him up here, okay? Whoa. Wow. A hog That's nose a... snake for the scavenger hunt. This is a difficult one to find, and look at that pointed nose right there. Uh-oh. <laughs> Uh-oh. You know what happens when they poop, right? Yeah, these guys are known for playing dead. Oh my gosh, the smell is unbearable. Wow. Dude, you are covered in poop. Let's wipe that off. Oh my oh. gosh. Ugh. Hands. When lifting rocks, <coughs> <coughs> swallow the bug. <coughs> <coughs> I was gonna try to tell you about rock etiquette. <coughs> Back to one. When lifting rocks, it's important to have good rock etiquette, which means you lift a rock gently and you place it right back exactly where you found it. Ants. Whoa. Do they bite or sting? Let's find out. They don't really do anything. They run away. <laughs> Not a sting episode. Will just called out to me that he found an abandoned car that I need to check out. I don't know what an abandoned car would be doing out here on the side of this mountain. Like, how did it even end up here? Wow, that is, what? I would not be surprised if rattlesnakes were using this old rusted car. That's really interesting. I mean, how did this get here? Either. They must have rolled it down the hill and crashed it. It'd be really creepy if we found a body in it. Not that I can see, just some uh, bush light. Yeah. Don't trick and drive. Yeah, that's a good message. Let's see if we can lift this hood. Yeah, give her a flipperoo. Oh. Don't see any rattlesnakes. No. Worth a check though. Oh, this is tired. Did it spin? Yeah, it's in place. Creepy. There's a rat snake on top. Oh my gosh, there is. Oh my goodness. In the abandoned car. A new species. <laughs> oh, new oh, one. Ow. New one. All right, what do you need me to do? Like, hold on. I might be able to. Here, here, here. Let me get some tangled in the engine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me take them off. There we go. Whoa. New species. Whoa. Careful, careful. Slipping. Yes. Whoa. How about that? All right, Will, what wow. do we got? 
we've got a black rat snake and this is actually a small one despite being a pretty decent sized snake these guys are the largest snakes around here they can get almost eight feet long they eat birds and they climb right up trees to nab squirrels this guy's in shed so his eyes are pretty blue unbelievable awesome what would you say is the holy grail of snake species in this area i would say the green snake they're bright bright green they look like nothing else from around here they're super tropical looking you never believe that they're right here in the appalachians when it comes to garter snakes we found the mother load a whole pile of sunning snakies right there these rocks are alive with snakes this is perfect conditions at the moment to find a number whoa jeez huge water snake really really big northern water snake all right here let's yeah. uh let's yeah i'm gonna need uh at least you to hold the hold the camera okay wow that's a big one hopefully it does not decide to give me a chomp because this is good size wow oh they got a green over there they got a green what they got a green over there Man. Ow! Oh, okay, uh, we're coming, we're, we're coming. coming. Oh, oh, beautiful. Amazing. And that's one of the rare ones for around here. <sighs> I was walking and sure enough, just saw a little movement and reached down and got the little green snake. Amazing. Beautiful. That is the holy grail. Uh, wow, okay, well, all in one two minute clip. Huge northern water snake and a smooth green snake here let me give you this all right let me see this guy oh my goodness wow the smooth green snake that is the ultimate right there look at that big snake little snake cute snake seemingly dangerous snake but both completely harmless no way mario just got another green snake how big is this one? Oh my gosh it's even tinier. Oh my goodness. Look at that little guy. Wow. Oh, that is gorgeous little green snake. Will, we did it. Two beautiful smooth green snakes. Now what's your favorite thing about this reptile? It's gotta be the vibrance, hands down. I mean, it's a bright green snake. It looks like it came from the jungle, but here we are in the Appalachians and we've got it. So this is one of my favorite snake species as a kid. I used to always see them in my backyard, but they're becoming more and more scarce. And what is the reason for that? Well, you know, along with habitat destruction, when people spray pesticides on their lawn, these guys eat insects. So if they eat insects that have pesticides on them, well, you know what happens. It's gonna wipe out the snakes. So less pesticides means more smooth green snakes. Will, an enormous thanks to you for taking us out today in some of your favorite herping spots. This was the ultimate snake scavenger hunt. Make sure to check out Will's YouTube channel. Lots of awesome videos there. And until we collaborate on the next one, I'm Coyote Peterson. I'm Will Robertson. Be brave. Stay wild. We'll see you on the next adventure. All right, smooth green snakes, back into the grass. When it comes to creatures that humans are afraid of, I always say there's the three big S's. Sharks, spiders, and snakes. You're very unlikely to be attacked or bitten by these animals. Yet unfortunate accidental encounters do happen. And in a worst case scenario, a single bite could put your life on the line. Today we are visiting the Reptile Discovery Center, located in DeLand, Florida. Owned and operated by Carl Barden, this Serpentarium is home to dozens of the world's most dangerous snakes, many of which are on display to educate the public. This location is also a Medtox and Venom laboratory, and it's the dangerous work going on behind the scenes that is saving human lives. Ooh, venomous reptiles. Good morning, Carl. Coyote, how you doing? Welcome. Good, how Thanks are you? Thanks for coming. Mara? Good morning, Coyote, welcome. Thank you guys so much for having me. This looks like the ultimate snake milking setup. This process is incredibly important. You guys are milking these snakes for the creation of antivenom. So tell us a little bit about this process. And I would classify this as arguably the most dangerous job in the United States at this point. But we never see it that way. We always think um, it's pretty well practiced. We do it so frequently, we handle 50 to 100 snakes a day, uh, typically four or five days a week. And probably most importantly, a number of these venoms are produced for the antivenoms, both here in North America and around the world. So let me just repeat that real quick. You said between 50 and 100 snakes a day. Have you ever been bitten in the process of milking snakes? Because accidents yeah, you know, do happen. 
we have about 500,000 venom extractions now, and every once in a while, right, he zigs and you zag, and the whole thing goes bad. So I've had 11 snake bites um, in the last 27 years. Only nine of those resulted in envenomation in actual hospital stays. We had two of those bites were dry. Um, but then you'll see the, the work here at the table is close work, but it's really uh, rehearsed and it's done very carefully and methodically. And so we like to think it can be done very safely. So the first snake that we're gonna get out from this, you see there's these enclosures behind me. Now, let me ask you this question real quick. How many snakes total do you guys have on? We've got those? about 1,000 on site right now, about 500 on the venom line. Okay. The first snake that we're gonna take a look at is the southern copperhead, and oh wow. Oh my gosh, beautiful. And that's a wow. big example of a southern. I um, was gonna say. This is about the, si the, the, the northern oh size. I mean, this is about as big as these guys get, and uh, she's really a perfect example. That's a big copperhead. I was gonna say, I've seen my fair share of copperheads. This is without question the biggest one I've ever seen. Wow. I'm gonna pivot out, Mara, and let you get into position, and we are going to begin the milking process. Copperhead. Now, where would you rank the toxicity of the copperhead's venom as compared to uh, a cotton mouth or a, a diamondback, right? So this is not necessarily a bite that's gonna kill you. Typically, no, typically, no. Copperhead venoms are not seen as especially toxic. Copperhead venom is extremely hemolytic, so hemorrhage and destroys blood cells and this kind of thing. And that's a lot of copperhead venom, something like 50 milligrams in a shot, perhaps a little bit more for her. And um, probably takes well over 100 milligrams of copperhead venom to actually kill somebody. So it's just not typically a lethal dose that you get in a bite. She's beautiful. If you want to touch her, it's just a spectacular snake oh in every regard. And we always think that color, that pattern is just unmatched. Amazing. I mean, that venom yield right there, you can just hear the power of those fangs going into yeah, they you know, bite. the little plastic you know, A very decisive there. bite, a rapid bite. And so, you know, it's an easy snake. You can see why copperheads bite more people in the Eastern United States than anything. Yep. You know? Wow. All right, we'll bring okay. her back, put her away. Wow, oh, that was fantastic. And that's just our first snake. You ready? All right, this is it. I'm going to assist in the milking of a water moccasin. As soon as I give Carl the go-ahead, the snake is coming out, and then it's up to me to make sure that we get a good soft body press so that uh, Carl's not bitten in the process of what this is. All right, Carl, are you set? Okay, here we go. Bring out the viper. All right, again, kind of an average size snake, perfect condition. And this is really typical of our local cottonmouth. This guy's a Volusia County snake. Um, she was caught right here as a baby. These guys are really prolific or, or common in some of the forests surrounding uh, Delant. All right, let's go. We'll bring this guy. I'm going to do the same kind of sweep here. Come on in with your press. Good, beautiful. You got her. You're excellent. I've got her. You can pick her up. You're safe. Good. Put your press down. Get a hold of that body. Excellent, Coyote. Make sure your hands cover that bench or you're going to get Oh, going to get mussed on? Okay. Yeah, really good. Really good. Let's see if she'll give us a shot here. There she goes. Oh, yeah, look at that. You can feel the, the power in the whole body when they bite down like that. Oh, yeah. There she goes Holy again. Mackerel. Nice, good. Perfect. All right, we're going to return her to her cage. Okay. You got her. Excellent, Coyote. All my hands are shaking. You did it. You did it. <laughs> That, really uh, you know, I, I was hands-on with the uh, snakes in Australia when we milked those species, but didn't necessarily have that pressure of having to gently pin down the body. Um, but anytime you're that close to one of these animals, I mean, even a slight margin of error can go catastrophically wrong. And from the venom yield that you see that came out of that snake, just unbelievable. It's just one bite from one of these snakes. So hey, honey, that was excellent. I feel. I feel all that adrenaline rushing through me. That's one snake, and I wasn't even holding the snake by the head, so I can only imagine you doing this for a couple hours at a time, snake after snake after snake. And if you thought the water moccasin was impressive, now we're gonna bring out the Eastern Diamondback, which yeah. arguably is the most dangerous pit viper in the United States, based on venom yield. I have a feeling that this is going to be intense. Wow, that is a big Eastern Diamondback. I think I just went to the bathroom in my pants a little bit. Holy cow, look at the size of that snake. Wow. That might be the biggest Eastern Dimeback I have ever seen. Wow. Okay, so now one of the key elements Don't of- Don't get any closer any than closer. right now. Okay, okay, yeah, no, I see she's, okay. she's, you know, I'm just gonna go like this and Good. talk over to the side like this, just in case you see she's in that classic 
S strike pose. Now, what makes these snakes so dynamic is that heat sensing pit on the front of their faces, right? So right now she's looking at me, she sees a heat signature that's definitely too big to be a prey item, which means I am likely a predator. I'm a threat at this moment. And like Carl said, I don't wanna get any closer because as you can see, they strike incredibly fast. And that strike happens so quick, if you're bitten by a snake of this size, it has the potential to kill you, without question. No question about it. Right, an Eastern Diamondback, a bite from an adult Eastern Diamondback rattlesnake is a potentially fatal snake bite. There's no question. Now, when it comes to Eastern Diamondback versus Western Diamondback, which one do you think is more dangerous, Carl? You can see she's getting agitated now. I think now, both right? of those, I'm just gonna shift her on the table a little bit. Yep. I think both of those snakes are probably equally dangerous. Eastern Diamondback venom is probably just the slightest bit more toxic, mm -hmm. um, but to just a little bit. And quantity-wise and size-wise, both of those guys are very serious rattlesnakes. So I, I think you're probably an equal on danger. Is everybody good? I'm gonna go ahead and catch him. Uh, yeah, it's, just, it's time. All right, here we go, guys. We're gonna do the... Oh, I'm gonna shift. I gotta shift him. Hold on, baby. Yep. Take just a step back no, here. No pressure yet. The most dangerous job in the United States right here, folks. There's a little now to keep him on the table. I'm gonna shift him and a little bit. Yeah. Carl, good. you're unbelievable. The focus that it takes, guys, to perform what this is. Don't change anything. You're good, easy. Wow, that is a very, very strong snake. Unbelievable muscular power without the body. Okay, you guys good? Whoa! That was a serious venom yield right there. My goodness. And that's really what makes the Eastern Diamondback so potentially dangerous, is that capability to really pile it out oh when they gosh. need to. Look at those fangs. Oh, and I actually see it's got a double set of fangs, which means it's getting ready to shut out one of those that's fangs, exactly right? right? That's exactly right. Yeah. Yes. Wow, look at that. All right, guys, zoom in as best you can to get a shot of those fangs. You can see the hooked nature. If you're bitten by one of these snakes, it's going to be a very, very bad day. A bite from this viper will definitely kill you if you do not receive anti-venom treatment. Okay, is it okay to let go of the, the tail? Good. Wow, look go at that back rattle. Back. Okay, very good, back in. Very excellent. Oh, that, that was intense. I mean, just being able to control a snake of that size on a table like that is is a challenge. Wow, Carl, that was it's impressive, really my friend. Holy job. mackerel. It's important to note that this venom will go into the creation of anti-venom, which eventually will save lives. So the work that Carl and Mara are doing here on a daily basis is saving anybody who accidentally comes upon one of these snakes and is bitten. Carl, I'm gonna give you a very dangerous thank you, sir. handshake to say thank you for having us behind the scenes at the lab here today to milk snakes. This was unbelievable. I'm sure one venom searing question that you all have is, what exactly happens when snake venom enters into the human body and reacts with its blood? Stay tuned guys, because that episode is coming up next. I'm Coyote Peterson, be brave, stay wild. We'll see you on the next adventure. All right, Carl, I'm gonna hand this off to you so that I don't drop it. That was crazy, amazing job. Oh my gosh, I'm so stoked. Being bitten by an animal is one of the worst experiences most people can imagine. Yet no matter how careful you are, accidents can and do happen every year. In the United States, it is accurate to say that Carl and Mara are literally putting their own lives at risk to ensure that anyone who is bitten by a venomous snake has a fighting chance for survival. If you would like to visit the Reptile Discovery Center or learn more about their Medtox and Venom laboratories, make sure to visit the website and schedule your chance to see these snakes in action. The Brave Wilderness Channel is a collection of exciting and educational animal adventure videos. Barely even moved, it was like perfectly camouflaged and it just said, okay, you can't see me. I'll tell you what, I did see you. Yes, even the ones where I'm being bitten or stung, ah! find themselves chock full of factual tidbits, tips, and tricks for avoiding these often misunderstood creatures in the wild. I believe that a big part of my role is to help people recognize the good in all animals, especially ones that a large percentage of people fear, like snakes and spiders. And while it's fair to say that these animals are feared worldwide, the species that live in Australia are often considered more terrifying because of their toxic nature. In fact, 
the world's most venomous snake and spider species call this island continent home. And some of them have venom so powerful, it's guaranteed to kill a human without the administration of anti-venom. Today I'm returning to Australian Reptile Park. This wildlife sanctuary is the only facility in the country that milks both snake and spider venom for the production of anti-venom. It's a dangerous process, and several years ago, I had the chance to learn alongside the park's arachnid expert, Kane Christensen. You can actually see the, the drops of venom on the tips of the fangs, and that's what we want. We want to get that venom from those fangs into the pipette. If you thought milking a spider was dangerous, today's education will be even more extreme as I will assist in milking the three most deadly snakes in the world. Okay, we're going to enter the most dangerous room on the planet, a room filled with venomous snakes. Zach, how are you? I'm good, yourself? Good to see you. You too. I was just explaining to these guys that this has gotta be the most dangerous room on the face of the planet. Every snake in here can potentially kill you, right? Oh, 100%. Second and third most toxic snakes in the world. Okay. So, pretty nasty. Now, the anti-venom that you guys create is saving lives every single day. How many people are bitten by these snake species on a yearly basis? Uh, so statistics are about three to 5,000 bites per year, with anywhere up to three to 400 lives um, being saved with the anti-venom program. So it's pretty cool. Wow. Well, sweet. Let's get into milking. What is the first species we're going to look at? Uh, so we're going to look at the king brown of the mulga. So uh, the big boy. Okay, I'm gonna let you do your thing. You let me know when you want me to come in to get hands on with the danger noodle. Right, yeah, so I'm gonna grab the snake out of the enclosure. I'll get you guys to jump back at that point because he's quite big and he'll, uh, he'll swing around a fair bit if, he's, if he wants to. Uh, we'll then come over here. I'll, uh, I'll swing him onto the pinning pad and using the, uh, the pinner. Uh, so nice and soft to protect the snake and to protect myself. Uh, it's slightly tacky as well, so it gives me that split second of time where he uh, slightly sticks to it, but it doesn't hurt him at all. Yeah. Then we're going to grab him and hopefully it all goes well. We'll be quiet and we'll let you focus. Oh my goodness. Come on, big boy. Wow. That is a huge snake. So yeah, you can see him a bit cranky. He's uh, not the happiest about this arrangement. Okay, where, where would you like me to go? Just right. so you just hang just there. Okay. And I'm gonna swing him, and then I'll get you to come in and just grab this back end for me. Okay. Just uh, once I get him by the head, he's not gonna be happy. Yep, go ahead and just focus to what you're doing. Grab the body. Yep, yep, yep. Got him. Oh my gosh, he's so powerful. Come over here. Yeah, that is a big, big mulga right there. Right, yeah, so now the trick is, because he's not a stupid animal, he wants to like me, not the jar. Present your finger as the target. There we go. Oh my goodness. Oh wow, that is a huge venom yield. So my give his goodness. venom glands a bit of a massage, trying to get a little bit more. Mm -hmm. But yeah, you can see him just chewing on that thing. Wow, look at those fangs. Massive fangs from a lapid. Wow. That is like a grappling hook of teeth. Can I move around just a second? Yeah. Like this? Look at his face. Whoa. Oh, you can see him still chewing, still yeah. rejecting venom. Venom is still dripping. And he's not letting go. And the power in this snake's body is unbelievable. So big around, I can barely get my hands completely on it. That is a massive snake. I never imagined seeing a mulga of this size. So how do you get the snake off of the venom vial now? A uh, little bit of manipulation, or there we go. Ooh, my goodness. And what we're gonna do is I'm gonna get you to put it in. Okay. I promise oh. I won't let go too long. Body, like, body yeah. first? Yeah, yeah, body first. Okay, here we go, here we go. Right, yeah, uh, now jump on back, because this is the okay. bit that goes a bit sketchy. Ready, three, two, one. Oh, nice job. That man. is a risky little game right there, <laughs> woo! My heart is racing. <laughs> yeah. That was cool. And that is not the most dangerous snake we're gonna milk. So next on the list is the coastal tiger. Yeah, yeah right? we're stepping it up quite a bit. So this is another large bodied snake, except these ones are pretty nasty. Okay, well, let's go for the coastal taipan and see what happens. Wow, this snake's big too. Oh my. So normally we, uh, we cool him down a little bit, so he's a little bit unsure what's happening. Mm -hmm. 
but uh, that might work to our advantage. Okay, ready? Yep. Yeah. Go. Wait, wait, wait. Yep, grab him. Okay, got him. What a cool looking snake. So ready? Yeah. I got pretty good at holding on his body here. Ooh. Wow. Give those venom glands a little bit of a squeeze. Holy mackerel, that looks like more venom than the King Brown. Yeah. You're this... right, and you said he's the record holder for largest venom yield. Yeah, so this guy's a pretty special animal. But that is a bad time. Wow. So if you were to be bitten by this snake and have that much venom go into you, do you think there's a chance you're gonna survive? Uh, it wouldn't be a very good chance. Okay. Uh, just the sheer amount would almost drown your system. Well, that's a phenomenal amount and hugely toxic. It's rather hard to find a coastal taipan, is it not? Yeah, they're pretty secretive, but uh, it's when you're out bushwalking, you jump over a log and uh, they just get a bit spooked. There you go. Okay. You ready to take him off the bio? Yeah, uh, I'm getting a bit nervous now, but yeah. he's a bit cranky. Okay, okay. So, same process. Same again, yeah, yeah. You to put the back first. end in. So yeah. much power in the body of that snake. So streamlined, love those scales. Okay. Right, I have to get that tail in. Going in. Okay. Three, two, one. <laughs> two down and <laughs> one more to go. And now we're stepping it up again. Is the most dangerous snake in the world. That was intense. Oh, bringing in the stairs for this one. Yeah, I'm not quite that tall. And he's here waiting. Oh, nicely done. Wow, this thing's beautiful. And you gotta be quick with the hands, huh? to those two big ones anyway. Mm -hmm. That's Fine. all you need. That's it, the most deadly snake in the world right there. And just a single drop of that venom can kill you, correct? Yeah. So that drop there would kill about 250,000 mice. It's amazing to be hands-on with a snake that is this dangerous. I mean, even if I saw one of these in the wild, I don't think I would ever try to interact with it. I mean, we would film it from a safe distance. Would never even think about catching it or heading it or certainly taking a look at those fangs. And, and you know, the fangs are not nearly as big as the other species, but man, to just know that that venom is so incredibly toxic. And how many people are bitten by this snake every year? Very, very little. So these are found out in the middle of basically Australia. No one goes out there unless they're looking for these guys. Mm -hmm. And normally if they're looking for them, they know what they're doing. Um, we had someone get bitten by one last year and uh, he was in a coma for nearly a week. Wow. But uh, he made it through. Amazing. All right, want to take it off the vial? Uh, yes, please. My hand's starting to cramp up. Okay. I'll take this one just because okay. we're up on top. Yeah. I am not going to climb up there with you. Woo! <laughs> I'm sweating. You're not the only one. Are you ready? Set. Nice. I thought he was coming back out then. <laughs> not a ton in there, but just that much would kill you. So. It's a dangerous job, and it takes incredible focus, precision, and a lot of guts to do this on a weekly basis. But how rewarding is it to know that this venom is going towards saving the lives of anyone that's bitten by one of these snakes? Oh, it's, it's awesome knowing that uh, I have an active part in saving lives. Like uh, me and Kane, we always say we're not smart enough to be brain surgeons, but we can save lives with the anti-venom programs we have. I've had uh, people come in, and it generally happens on your worst week when everything's going wrong, and they'll come in and go, oh, you're the reason I'm here, or you're the reason I'm able to bring my kids here. It's, uh, it's an incredible feeling. It just gives you chills. Like I've got goosebumps just talking about it. It's, yeah. it's awesome. Well, Zach, thank you so much for having us behind the scenes <laughs> here today welcome. at the Australian Reptile Park, where we got to milk three of the most deadly snakes on the planet. I'm Coyote Peterson. Be brave. <laughs> Stay wild. We'll see you on the next location. Every year, a collision course with fate finds dozens of adventure seekers, outdoor enthusiasts, and even backyard gardeners bitten. 
by one of Australia's most deadly creatures. Most bites happen by accident, and while no one ever wants to be in the wrong place at the wrong time, there is comfort knowing that wildlife experts such as Zach Bauer and Kane Christensen are fearlessly working to extract venom that will be used to save lives. The creation of anti-venom is a fascinating science. And if you would like to learn more information about Australian Reptile Park's milking program, make sure to visit their website. There's an old saying, if at first you don't succeed, try, try, and try again. When it comes to featuring the elusive timber rattlesnake, this saying seems to be our team motto. Oh my gosh. The terrain that we traverse looking for rattlesnakes is a challenge unlike anything we've really ever done before. And this is our third venture out looking for timbers and it never gets any easier. As the sun is really beating down on us, you can see all this distance down behind me. These mountainsides are what we essentially scale looking for these perfect clusters of rocks where the snakes will be out and sunning. It takes a toll on your body, that's for sure. I'm gonna catch up to Tim and Mario. This hike is definitely testing our will to find these snakes. Today we have gained special permissions to explore what is known as a right-of-way that was built several years ago during the insertion of a natural gas pipeline. Upon initial installment, this type of construction would have had an adverse impact on the local wildlife. Yet beyond construction, it has become an ideal habitat for many species. Insanely steep, brush covered, and strewn with a jumble of various rock sizes, this is now the perfect safe haven for our sought after target, the timber rattlesnake. Wow. I mean, we're always talking about how beautiful West Virginia is, but when you make it to the top of a bluff like this, Check out the view. That is something. My goodness. Wild and wonderful West Virginia right there. Endless miles of possible snake territory. But are we gonna find one? That's the real question. Once again, we have teamed up with wildlife expert, Tim Brust. You likely recognize Tim from a variety of episodes on the Brave Wilderness channel but it's truly the timber rattlesnake that we can define as his specialty. Currently, Tim has been conserving these snakes by mitigating human-snake interactions. Simply put, he explores the areas that are about to go into construction, finds, and safely moves these reptiles from the path of bulldozers. During this process, he also educates field crews about these misunderstood animals, which helps to keep the snakes alive and the humans safe from having an unwanted venomous encounter. We are going down at a pretty considerable angle right now in our search for timber rattlesnakes. Now, a lot of this environment has this crumbled flat rock, right? All of this, this almost like sheet rock. So we're lifting up these giant pieces of rock and looking beneath them for snakes. You hear that? It is completely hollow underneath this rock and it's very big, which means there's no chance of flipping it but I came down and I scouted this after walking over it and look at this. That right there is an absolute perfect spot for a timber rattlesnake to be hiding. Now you would never want to stick your hand up and underneath a rock like that to sift through the leaves. A bite from a timber rattlesnake could definitely kill you. It's just a matter of covering ground and searching, searching, searching. The more ground we cover, the better the chances we have of finding a snake. The Western Hemisphere is home to 32 different rattlesnake species. And in my opinion, the timber rattler is one of the most iconic. We have been trying for years to share this species with you. But today, things are about to change. So Tim and Mario are ahead of me. They just call out, they found a timber rattlesnake. Making my way as fast as I can down this rocky slope. I'm coming, I'm coming, I'm coming. Okay, this is it. We've got a timber rattlesnake. Yes! Oh my gosh, that snake is beautiful. Okay, sounds like we've got two snakes. So what we're doing is just bagging the snake for the moment to see if we can get the bigger one. A really big snake, really big snake. 
All right, what do you need me to use? Whoa, holy mackerel, that is I a huge can't. snake. We, it's, it, we can't. We can't. Here, hold the tongs here. You got him? Yep. Watch out. Here's the head body here. Be really careful. There's other snakes in the area. So what's happening right now is we've got a very big snake underneath this rock. It's a There's very a dangerous situation. You can see how steep it is right here. So we've got to be very careful. There are also other snakes within the rock. So we're going to slowly peel back pieces of these rocks and see if we can safely get the snake. Check it out. There are sheds of snake skin all over the place. We have found a hot spot. It's been quite the hike to get to this spot, but we have finally got a timber rattlesnake. Several of them out here. The other one? It's a big snake. Oh my God. Hold him, hold him, hold him. Wow, that is a huge rattlesnake. Okay, do we have another bag with us? Yep. Okay. In total, we were able to secure three snakes, one of which appeared to be a gravid female. This is incredibly exciting for the future of this population. Beautiful. And to ensure she does not get stressed, we immediately release her back into the rock. Don't want to get any closer than that. How about that, Mario? We finally got our timber. <laughs> we got multiple timbers. Oh my gosh. That is a good sized snake. All right, so what we're going to do is actually put the snake in a snake bag at the moment. It is definitely a big snake, but we can't film right here. We have to take it to a slightly more controlled setting. So we're going to safely bag it, move it, and then bring it back down here for the release. When you're bagging a snake, you always want to secure it at the back side of the bag with the snake hook. Snake skin. That means this is a healthy population of rattlesnakes that hang out in this area here. We've hit the rattlesnake mother load, that's for sure. <laughs> With the two other snakes contained, we begin the arduous climb back up the steep sides of the right of way. This is a very slow and very delicate process. Mario, are you doing okay? Actually, I tell you what, it's really hard on the forearm. You gotta keep the snake well away from your body so it doesn't swing on you. Snakes can bite easily through the bags. And most people are envenomated when they're transporting snakes like this, so you have to be very careful. There's the snakes. That's where we came from. And that is where we're still going. Whew. A lot of effort, but totally worth it. There it is, the timber rattlesnake. This is our third attempt at finding one of these reptiles in the wild, and my goodness, is this one handsome. Now, the name timber rattlesnake comes from the fact that you find these snakes in forested areas, and they are cryptic. Unless you know exactly what it is that you're looking for, your odds of seeing one are rather pretty slim. Unless you stumble upon it and it gives you that warning of its rattle, you may walk right past it. Now, as compared to the other rattlesnake species here in the United States, I'd actually consider this species rather docile. Their defense is always going to be to rely on their camouflage first. If you get too close, this is exactly what you're going to hear. That rattle going into full action, basically a security system that says, you're too close, get any closer, and you may take a bite. You can see how close I am to the snake right now, just about a foot and a half from it. I don't wanna make any sudden movements and provoke it too striking, but it definitely senses that I'm here. The rattlesnake is the pinnacle of snake evolution. What I want you guys to really take a look at are the heat sensing pits right in front of the eye and right below the nostril that allow these snakes to pick up the heat signatures of their prey. Basically, all they need to do is lay in wait as an ambush predator for something to come close. Their tongue will flick out, they will sense the chemicals, the smell of that prey item, and then with those heat sensing pits, they can hone in almost like a heat seeking missile and then strike out with those hinged fangs. Remember, the fangs are like hypodermic needles and the second they inject that venom, that prey item has pretty much no chance of surviving. Now, if it's something like a small rabbit or a rat, a chipmunk, a squirrel, and it runs off, the snake will actually follow the scent of that prey item until it succumbs to the venom, and then it's capable of swallowing down its meal. And those fangs work individually of one another, and they will almost use those like grappling hooks 
to drag their prey backwards into their mouths. Now, the fangs are modified teeth, but all snakes have multiple rows of teeth within their mouth that are constantly being replaced throughout the course of the snake's life. So as the fangs draw the prey in, the other teeth work it back down the throat and they swallow their prey whole. Now, as compared to other rattlesnake species in the United States, I would say the timber rattlesnake is more ambush than it is nomadic. They will always lay in wait, waiting for their prey to come to them. Any small mammals or small amphibians that they come across within the forested environment make perfect prey. And a snake of this size, which measures, I would guess, just a little over three feet in length, is considered a full-grown adult. You may be saying to yourselves, Coyote, you guys are so good at being able to come across animals. How come it's taking you so many attempts to find the timber rattlesnake? This species specifically has been persecuted beyond what other rattlesnakes have even faced. A lot of times people will come across the den, which is known as a hibernaculum. Once they see this, a huge collection of snakes, what they will do is sometimes dump concrete or gasoline and burn these snakes or bury them alive. So you can wipe out an entire population of snakes by doing something like that. So seeing one of these snakes, actually several of them like this in the wild in a very difficult to reach spot is a very positive thing. It means that the population is thriving. Nothing makes us more excited than to see a thriving population of timber rattlesnakes. This is just such a cool reptile. Now the next most important thing that we need to do is actually collect the biometrics of this snake. And to do that, what we're gonna do is gently get it into a snake tube. This will put the least amount of stress on the snake and will be the safest scenario for both myself, Tim, and the crew to be able to handle the snake. What I also wanna do is get a more up close look at that rattle. Because when it comes to rattlesnakes, nothing is more impressive than that defense system. All right, snake is on the move. All right, Tim, so what would you like me to do to help with this part of the procedure? And these guys, you want to gently direct their head into the tube. Got it. So when he goes in, just set the tube at an angle if you can downward. Okay. Sometimes it takes 30 seconds, sometimes it takes 20 minutes. Grab, 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 grab now, quick, quick, quick. Push him in, push him up. There you go. Two on the tube, two on the snake. Woo! That was not easy. Wow, that is a powerful snake. My goodness. With the snake safely tubed, Tim and I are able to quickly collect the biometrics, which include the snake's total length, scale count below the cloaca to determine the reptile's sex, and finally, a rattle button count. This doesn't tell us anything specifically scientific, it's just cool to compare rattle sizes. That rattle is one of the most unique aspects of this snake. And the rattle itself is actually made out of modified scales. You can actually see the way that it's growing out of the tip of the rattlesnake's tail itself. Now inside its tail are a bunch of very specialized muscles that allow the tail to vibrate at a very high rate, which causes the rattle to actually rattle. So I can rattle it myself like that or if I let go of those muscles, the rattlesnake will rattle it on its own. Now the rattle is made out of something known as keratin, the same material that the scales are made out of and the same thing that your hair and your fingernails are made out of. People always wanna know, well, what's inside the rattle of a rattlesnake? Truth be told, nothing at all. They're actually interlocking segments that are hollow. They're known as buttons, and when they vibrate against each other, that is where you get the rattling sound. Now, you cannot tell the age of a rattlesnake by the number of buttons. People often think that like the rings of a tree, if you count those buttons, you can tell how old the snake is. That is not true, because throughout the course of the snake's life, it can lose segments of its rattle. But a new button comes into place every single time this snake sheds its skin. Now, this snake here has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13 buttons on that rattle. Honestly, this is the largest rattle I've ever seen on any of the rattlesnakes we have featured on the Brave Wilderness channel. Truly a unique aspect of this snake's evolution that makes it so incredibly distinct as compared to any other snake around the world. Well, how cool was this, spending an unbelievable amount of time searching for and finally finding the timber rattlesnake. I'm Coyote Peterson, be brave, stay wild. We'll see you on the next adventure. 
Together, Tim and I worked out of scene to collect biometrics on the other big snake. It was robust and as healthy as a rattlesnake could be, which was a great sign for this thriving population. No two snakes are ever the same. And considering the timber rattler comes in such a wide variety of color faces, it's pretty cool to see just how different individuals are, especially when compared side by side. Finally, we hiked back down to the point of discovery and released both snakes into their corresponding rock crevices. The future of rattlesnakes, and all snakes for that matter, is always tangled up in a series of uncertainties that center around an unnecessary fear of these misunderstood reptiles. Yet it's conservationists like Tim Brust and the tireless work he does to help people understand the importance of these creatures that will ensure they continue to slither across the planet. If you're a large construction company and are concerned for the safety of your team, but are also cognizant of the important role native wildlife plays, let's get these animals out of the bulldozer's pathway. Click on the link in the video description below to contact Edge Engineering and Science. Tim and the rest of their staff can provide the necessary support to make sure your workers are safe, the project's in compliance, and the final result will be a happy balance between nature and humans. I'm on Australia's Sunshine Coast, and I'll be interviewing Leela, a woman who knows firsthand the dangers of interacting with a venomous snake. She's a bite victim survivor who nearly lost her life, and today, she's going to be sharing her incredible story. Now, what Leela doesn't know is that we're also going to be getting her face to face with a deadly snake whose venom, believe it or not, ultimately saved her life. For you, this all began in 1974, the day it all happened when you were bitten by a venomous snake. Can you take us back to that morning when you were heading out to the barn, you had farm animals and you were, you were barefoot. Like a lot of people in Australia walk around barefoot and you found yourself in the worst case scenario. Take us to that morning and tell us the story. Well, it happened in the afternoon, late afternoon, mm -hmm. almost on dark. And I had a goat and I was putting the goat under the house. I mean, what goat wouldn't want to live underneath a house? <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I was happily putting her under the house. I had a baby and a two year old inside. Mm -hmm. And I felt this, like a pins and needles feeling, like pins and needles in my foot. And so I went inside and I thought straight away that I definitely had been bitten by a snake or a spider. Okay. I wasn't sure what. Um, the poison immediately went straight up to my head. Really? So I got a migraine headache. I've never had a migraine headache in my life. So I had this migraine headache and straight away I started to vomit. So I got the bucket and I'm leaning over the bucket vomiting and thinking, oh God, I need help, I need help. So I put my baby and my two-year-old and myself in the car with the bucket so I could keep vomiting in the bucket and go to the neighbours. And then the neighbour takes me straight to the Southport Hospital. And at the Southport Hospital, the doctor thought I was, reckon I was a hippie and I was on drugs and I didn't know what I was talking about. That's an unfair judgment. Very unfair. And um, gave me a blood test and left me all night with no antivenin, no nothing. And um, I was yelling out for help because I was getting feverish and I knew they weren't doing anything for me and I was screaming out for help. I want my acupuncturist to come to the hospital. An acupuncturist in the 70s? <laughs> yeah, and the acupuncturist actually made it up to the hospital. He heard somehow on the grapevine. Certainly no text he, messaging he back came, then. No, no mobile phones <laughs> back then. He came up to the hospital and he felt, because acupuncturists, they go on your pulse. Everything's on your pulse. Mm -hmm. He felt my pulse and he felt every muscle fighting the venom. Wow. And the next morning, I had fallen into a coma and every muscle had collapsed and I couldn't breathe. And so they found the venom in my blood test and then they gave me the antivenin, but it wasn't. I, I, I couldn't breathe at this stage, yeah. so they had to put me into an ambulance and race me to intensive care in Brisbane, which was about 100 kilometres. And so I was on oxygen in the ambulance. Just as they got to the hospital, they ran out of oxygen, I died. They raced me up. Hold on, you died? I died, my heart stopped beating, they raced me up to intensive care and they got me going, they got me breathing. 
How did they get you breathing? Did they have to put a tube down into they your They had to put lungs? tubes all over me okay. and in my mouth. And they leave the tubes in your mouth for five days. And after five days, they have to do tracheotomy because uh, it can get infected. Yeah. So they had to do a tracheotomy where they open up your throat and they put a machine into your throat, a tube, and the machine is actually breathing for you because you cannot breathe on your own. So a lot of the snakes in Australia have a, a neurotoxic venom which ultimately can cause your internal system to go into a state of paralysis and collapse. And it sounds like that's exactly yeah, and what I had to I you. had big hematomas in my groins, which are big black bruises. Yeah. Which are hematomas are internal bleeding. Mm -hmm. So I had internal bleeding and um, I was in the coma for six days. Wow. And uh, then after that, I regained my consciousness. So the moment that you came back, let's call this day seven into your ordeal, do you remember waking up out of this coma? I do. I do. And I remember thinking to myself, I'm, this is a dream. Really? I'm, I'm having a dream. This can't be real. This can't be real. So once you've woken up out of the coma, like were you just kind of like a cucumber there in your bed? Like at that point, had your muscles had gained no. I had no back. strength. I had no strength. They they set me up, and I just fell back down again. I had no strength at all. That I must to, have been so scary. It was a slow, a slow um, process of my muscles building back up. So you're in the coma. Um, you come out of it, and I imagine your first question to the doctors would be. Do we know what kind of snake bit me? Do you know at this point which species it was? I don't know if I knew at that point, but David Flay mm -hmm. from Fauna and Flora Reserve in Burley Heads, mm -hmm. who had it for many, many years on the Gold Coast, he was an expert on snakes and he diagnosed the snake as a rough scale snake. Ooh, yeah, no rough scale snake. I mean, that aligns with the uh, symptoms that you had from the venom. And here's the thing about a rough scale snake, very unassuming looking snake, small head, small mouth. So I could see if you got a bite from that snake, fast striking and very, very small fangs, but very potent venom. So Leela, after you get out of the hospital and you're back home, between 1974 and now, do you have any long lasting yes. symptoms? You do? Yes, I don't have any reserves. So if I go downhill, I can't pull on any reserves. I've just got to go to bed and go to sleep. In fact, I've got to lay down at lunchtime every single day. And I've got to recuperate because um, my nervous system is damaged from the snake venom. The snake venom affects your central nervous system. And that's one thing is permanently damaged from the snake bite is my nervous system. Gotcha. Okay, so a lot of people out there have a fear of snakes. It's called ophidiophobia. So I have to ask you, previously or now or after this experience, were you afraid of snakes or are you now afraid of snakes given that one nearly took you? I'm not afraid of snakes, no, because I love animals. Mm -hmm. I love animals and I just happen to be in the wrong place at the wrong time. Yeah. And I respect snakes. I respect all animals. Mm -hmm. That's, I mean, that's a fantastic message. I think a lot of people would assume if somebody was bitten by a snake and it nearly killed them that like, snakes, this is why I don't like them. But you're right. I mean, snakes are doing an amazing thing for the planet. They are the control for all of the species that we as humans usually try to have not get into our house. All of the vermin species, the mice and different rodents. I, I believe that snakes will just want to really just get out of your road, mm -hmm. you know. They just want to get on with their life. They're not out there to kill you, you know? they're not out there to bite you. Mm -hmm. Now, we have a little something extra lined up today. I don't know if you were aware of this or not, but would you be comfortable? <laughs> we have, we a have, rough scale. we are rough in the vicinity snake. of a snake, not a rough scaled snake, oh. the tiger snake, the snake that is actually responsible for providing the venom, they create an anti-venom to save your life. Would you be up for meeting a tiger snake? Today? I would, I'd like to meet it. I don't yeah. hold it. It will be totally controlled. And if you want, you'll even be able to pet its tail. No, no, I don't think so. You don't think you'll pet its no. tail? You might when you see how pretty no, the snake I is. No, I don't know. <laughs> we'll cross that bridge when we get it to it. But <laughs> you at least seeing the snake, that's a huge step. And saying that you're not afraid of snakes, most people, had they been bitten by a snake, would have immediately said, whoa, 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 hold on, you're, you've, have, you've got a snake here in the same vicinity as me? 
So I love that you immediately, oh, you. I saw your eyes light up. You're like, no, thank no, no, you. I love snakes. I would love to see what this snake is. Thank so you. that is going to be the next piece of this episode, getting Leela up close and personal with the very snake species whose venom ultimately saved her life. I'm a fighter, you know. Yeah. I, I fought my way back, I reckon. Yeah. I'm here today because I'm a fighter. Okay, Leela, we've got you in the room of snakes. Now, I know you're not afraid of snakes. We've already accomplished that, but the tiger snake is going to be coming out here. Lockie's going to get it onto the floor. We're back with plenty of distance. We're gonna get it inside of the tube and you'll see how that completely controls the snake's head. So it keeps us and the animal completely safe. It's always a little nerve wracking though anytime one of these venomous snakes comes out of its enclosure. Ooh. See that? So now that the snake is in the tube, we'll work it up just a little bit further. Okay, cool, snake is under control. And now we're going to move a little stool in for you to sit on. Right. Are you comfortable? Yep. Yeah. Okay, cool. Lockie, we're good? Okay. Leela, feeling okay? Yeah. Okay, there it is, the tiger snake. You can see why it's called the tiger snake, that beautiful tiger pattern. Now, they come in a variety of different colors. This one specifically, I would say, is extra beautiful. It kind of looks like the white Siberian tiger version. Yeah, it's um, Leela, is this your first time encountering a venomous snake since the bite incident? Yes. It is. Wow, that's a big step. Here we are 50 years later and you're in the room with the very animal whose toxic venom ultimately became the thing that saved your life. Wow. Hmm. How are you feeling right now? A little yeah. more nerve wracking to be in a room of snakes no, than no, it is on the porch? Fine. Totally relaxed, okay. Yeah. Now, what are the odds, do you think, that you are able to just gently pet the snake's back? Do you think you could do that? The back. The back of it. What about the tail? You can touch the tail, yeah. You want to pet the tail? Okay, yep. Pretty cool, huh? Yeah. Ooh. Yeah, but nothing can hurt you. See how the, the snake's head obviously completely contained with inside of that tube. And this is a rather secretive snake species, so unless you're in the right place at the right time to see the snake, which as a team we are often looking to do, but for anybody out there wanting to avoid snakes, there's a good chance you'd be able to avoid this one. Oh, okay. Yeah. And when applicable, milking the venom from this species is what is saving people that are bitten. So it's pretty cool that this snake and the, the science that's being done to save lives comes from such a cool animal. Do you want to touch it on the back there? Beyond the tail, or we're working beyond the tail at this point? Pretty smooth, huh? Yeah. A lot of people think that snakes are slimy. They certainly are not. The scales are very dry, very sleek, and very powerful. You can see how it's just slowly inching itself forward in the tube. And I'm gonna let it come up just a little bit more like this. And I'm gonna let the head just peek out a tiny bit so the Mario can get that shot. But don't worry, you're still gonna be completely safe. There we go. Look at that, pretty cool to see. See that? that oh, just look at that. He's like, I want to just keep going. So, just don't put it, point it this way. Oh my that. God! He yawned right at oh, you. Oh, no. That was basically him saying, Oh hey, no, I'm starting to feel a bit nervous Leland. now. Leland. Oh, no, nice to meet to you. Go. Nice to meet <laughs> you. I feel a little bit nervous Ooh. now. A little bit nervous now? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, I think at this point, what I would love to do is show you the proper treatment for a snake bite. Yeah, this is like a good idea. Probably a good idea to get it back into its enclosure yeah, at this point. Yeah, I think point. so, yeah. All right, yeah. I'm going to hand the tiger. Everybody back up just a little bit there. Tiger's coming back over to Lockie. Let me know when you're comfortable. Good, got okay, got it. Yeah. And there we have it. I patted it. You I did, patted you it. did. That's it, that's I even such a huge step. Back. I patted it's you back. Patted, yeah, you, uh, and you see, and up I there you're like, I no, that. I'm not gonna be able to pat it. But then uh, you saw, you realized, oh, it's not that scary. Can I give you a hug? <laughs> I'm so proud of you. <laughs> that was amazing. Leela, we did it. You told your story to the world, you got face to face with a venomous snake and even touched it, not just the tail, but also the back. I'm Coyote Peterson, be brave, stay wild. We'll see you on the next adventure.